So uh, my talk's on uh, chain streams in MongoDB. Um, for people who don't know what MongoDB is, uh, it's a multi-purpose database. So similar to like SQL Server or, or MySQL or Oracle or the many other databases, the idea is trying to fit lots of different needs uh, and can do like indexing and stuff like that for better performance. Uh, with the um, kind of thing in mind for scalability and flexibility, so it can scale horizontally with uh, little effort and it's super flexible for developers to just write tests around and ship their um, code into production. Um, but the features on chain streams, and this is one of the many features what MongoDB has. Uh, and the idea is you have this thing in the middle, which is uh, in between your database and your application, uh, and these are chain streams, and it's to, to allow you to have applications which are more real time and can react on behaviors your application, uh, your database, sorry. So one th when one thing's updating your database, another thing can be like listening to that and then reacting based on that. And the things you can add chain streams to, uh, you can open a chain stream on, sorry, um, are collections, uh, databases, and clusters. So if you want to like kind of listen to any kind of events that are coming off uh, of these um, uh, items, you can just listen to them. And the uh, events are actually read from the uplog, so that's a way like MongoDB uses replication. And if you've got an uplog of like, say, 20 minutes for the replication for the database, uh, and you try to read past that, you'll just get an error because it doesn't exist anymore. And the same thing if you're not reading fast enough, that you'll just drop off the end as well and things like that. Um, which means you can actually read in the past. So if I wanted to start reading events on my orders collection to see what happened to my orders an hour ago, I could do that as long as I've got the data for it. And you can also resume them as well. So if your application crashes or if you pause it, you can get a resume token to continue kind of uh, processing them, request them. Uh, these are all the operation types which you can kind of uh, do. So on documents, you can check when they're inserted, updated, and deleted. Um, we also have when um, the database is dropped. And then for a collection, you have it when it's created, dropped, uh, any index changes. Uh, when the collection is modified, so there's lots of different flags on the database, uh, on the collection, which you can listen to as well. Uh, when the collection is renamed, or if the shard key is modified or added to the collection. And there's also another one which is invalidated. So that's for things like if I'm listening to a document with inside of a collection, saying I'm listening to things which have been updated, and then somebody comes along and just like drops my collection, that doesn't exist anymore, so it invalidates that chain, uh, chain stream. So you're probably thinking, ah, oh, give me some code, let's just waffle. Um, so this is kind of what it looks like. It's exactly the same as how you normally kind of communicate to Mongo. Uh, this is all C-sharp. So you create a Mongo client, you go to the database of .NET Chef, you go get a collection, um, of order, so it's all typed. And then we can go call this thing called watch here. Um, so you do a uh, dot watch async, which gives you a cursor, and then you can just for each uh, async over that cursor forever until it stops. Uh, and this is like a, a, a kind of um, an extra method on the cursor to allow you to continually batch them up and iterate over the top of it so you don't need to do your own iterations over it. Um, yeah, inside that um, chain stream document, which is on here, so in this method that gets a chain stream document, you, it has a bunch of extra properties on there. So you can say where the operation type is updated. So it'll drop into this block. Uh, and then it has like an update description with updated fields. So you can say, go get the field of status out there uh, and pass it back out. And you can also get the document key. And then we can write a console log saying the ID of change to this status. So if you listen to an order changing statuses, uh, every time it's updated, you can just write a query like this to kind of pull the actual status out of there. Uh, the resumption tokens, uh, you can just call a method called get uh, resume token. Uh, and if you want to resume from a different point, you, um, you can just pass this into the watch method with a train stream options. Uh, so it has a resume after you pass in the token. Uh, this is actually a BSON document, so you can just like serialize, uh, or just uh, binary serialize it straight to disk or something or anywhere else you want. So if you've got it running on your local machine, you can just serialize that to a file and then rehydrate it and then pass it in every time you open and close your application maybe. Or maybe if you're running the cloud, you might want to store it somewhere else, I don't know. Um, also the aggregation pipeline, you can use that part of it. So if you've used Mongo before, there's this powerful query language called the aggregation pipeline. Um, it, there's loads more different um, stages and these are called stages uh, to the aggregation pipeline, but these are the ones what um, are allowed with inside of chain streams. Um, so you can add fields to the document that comes back. You can match different properties. So you can say when it's only an update statement. Um, 
you can project things out of it, you can replace the root so you can just change the whole document to be what look and feel like you want it to be, so you're not pulling all the data back all the time, so it's a bit more efficient. Uh, replace does replaces, you can redact like a certain information, you can set certain properties and unset certain properties. So you have the full um, uh, configurability of kind of what you receive back from the database. So if you've got a massive um, document what represents like a, a legal case, for example, and you only want to get the customer's name out of it when it changes, uh, but the whole customer information of the address and everything, you can just project that back out of that um, document so you're not dragging the whole uh, case along with it. Uh, and that kind of looks like this. So we can create an empty pipeline definition of a chain stream document order. Um, and then you can, do, it's got a bunch of methods, ex extension methods on it. So you can do a dot match, and you can say, match it when it's an operation type of updated. And then we've got a, the, the updated field being the status being set to completed. So that means if we watch uh, that collection based on that pipeline, we'll only get information when it's updated and the uh, when the document's updated and the status of that order has been changed to completed. So that means we can do things like um, listen to this and every time we get a completed we can send them an email for example. Um, uh, you can also get a, a full document lookup as well. So by default it only gives you the things which have changed um, but you might want to go fetch the document as well off the disk to get more information on it. So say you're Every time the status changes on order, you might want to get the email address as well to be able to send uh, them an email. Um, what we can do is set this uh, chain stream full document options to <laughs> update, uh, look, update lookup, uh, which give, doesn't actually give you the, the document after it's changed. It gives you the document um, when the chain stream gets loaded to you, which means it gets the current majority committed. So that's the, what's being committed on disk uh, on the majority of your cluster. So if you've got a three node cluster and it's being committed to two of them, that's the data what you'll get back from the database. Uh, but it might, so if you listen to the status updated uh, of um, completed and you go do a full document lookup, you might get a, um, the status being finalized instead because the actual status might have changed from the actual change stream event happening and then it doing a document lookup. So they might be actually different states um, so to do that, we just set the full document uh, to the update uh, lookup, and then you just get another property on here on the actual uh, chain stream document, uh, full document, and then we can just like display it on the screen. And that's the typed object as well. So it'll deserialize that for you. And if that's not good enough for you, there's a thing called pre and post images as well. So this is a way, way to receive the, the document, so the order what we've got, before the event happened and after the event happened exactly. Um, so for pre-images, um, you, you get a pre-image if uh, replaced, updated, deleted, but you don't get a pre-image for updated, inserted because you can't have a document that doesn't exist. So you can't get a pre-image of that. And it's the same for the opposite for the post-image. You can get it for inserted, replaced, and updated, but you can't get it for deleted because after the document's been deleted, it doesn't exist. Um, to enable that, you have to enable this per collection as well. And there's a flag called chain stream pre and post images where you need to set. And it's only supported on uh, version six or higher. Um, so on the collection itself, you can create a collection. So normally in Mongo, people don't really explicitly create collections. Uh, but you can explicitly create the collection and then just pass this uh, create collection options of chain stream pre and post image options with a paste of uh, enable true. Um, and that'll just set your collection up to do that. You can also modify the collection as well. So if you've got a collection already that exists, you can modify it and change it so the pre and post images are turned on. But if you've got a chain stream listening to that um, collection while you're changing it, the old events won't have any pre and post images because it can't build them out of nothing. But the ones which actually happen after that point, they'll have the pre and post images. Um, and then for looking at, um, doing the, uh, getting the full document and the full document before. Uh, you set these two properties in the chain stream options, so you can set them to required, uh, which means you want them. And then when we iterate over that cursor, we'll get a full document before change and a full document, which is the after the change, which will get the, the exact ones, if you need to kind of have that detail. Um, so a bit of considerations on them. 
Like most things, I only do it if you need it. Um, enabling pre and post images uh, takes up a lot more storage and, and it lays more processing time because it's having to keep them snapshots of everything all the time. And also try to ch uh, keep your chain stream event sizes to less than 16 meg as well. So I got a little bit of a demo. So I have an app here. Can people see this code? Ah, oh, no. Can we? There we go. So this has got my password up here for my database. And then my username is that. So people can copy and paste that straight away. Um, so we create the client, like we saw before. We get the database. We get the collection. And this is just iterating over forever and, and inserting an order with a name, with a number. It's delaying for two seconds. And then it's going to update the, uh, that document again and set the orders to be processing. So we get an update one here. We wait until two seconds, and then we kind of uh, update it to be completed and set the complete that to be the current date of the database server. Um, so I can start that running to start off with. That's confusing. Let me get that by the way. So, so that'll, oh, that was. <laughs> Fine, sign. Um, so that's happily just going and creating some orders. So it's creating a, a, an order, putting it in progress, putting it completed, and keep cycling over that. And then I've got a bit more code over here, which is pretty much exactly the same. I probably don't want to drop the collection because that's going to be confusing. I'll create it. Let me comment these out. Uh, so it gets the collection. It creates a pipeline uh, saying, I want the documents which, uh, f the orders which have been updated or inserted, and I want to watch on that. And I've got the cursor back out of it. And then what I say is like, if it's an update, I want to go grab the status because uh, I know they're updating the status, and then just print on the screen saying the order with this document ID has changed to the status. And if it's inserted, I just want to say there's a new order and then print out the new order in JSON on the screen because this is actually the typed object. So if I go flip back to this one and I run the second app, this will start listening to the changes which the other one is doing and should slowly work. It's going through my phone, so it might take a long time. Um, yeah, so there we go. We've got a, got a new order come in. Uh, with a bunch of stuff uh, with the new order name there. It's got status change to processing and then completed, then it just keeps iterating over. It should be in the, pretty much the same kind of, so as soon as this does some work, this one will be notified straight away and it can do some different operations based on what it needs to do. So that's pretty cool. So back to my slides. So a uh, few thoughts on this. Um, chain streams are pretty cool to kind of play around with, uh, but I strongly advise keeping them in the bounded context within like a single uh, bunch of services. So like most microservices, you don't want it just to be fat fingering into every single database which is out there and just listen to changes. Uh, this couples you to the actual schema of the database. And even though like Mongo has like a schema-less, kind of like a flexible schema, um, it still relies on certain fields being set. So if somebody and there's some other team in your organization renames status to be uh, order status instead, then it'll break your chain streams and they just won't work. So try to keep them in the bounded context inside of one deployable unit. Um, they're really good for data synchronization. So maybe you've got like a, another collection, which is a company collection. And on there, it has a company name. And then on the order, you've got the company, which is that order is assigned to. And you've got a bunch of names. And every time they change the name on the company, you want to update all the orders with the companies. You could do that with chain streams quite easily. Uh, a lot of people do that with the event buses and stuff like that. But you could also use chain streams for exactly the same thing. Um, it's good for decoupling, so that kind of scenario where you want to kind of separate out your business logic. So you want your main process flow to be a certain thing, where you're creating the order, collecting the order information, but then maybe sending off emails out on the side. You might want to uh, decouple that from your system. They're really good for materialized views uh, to increase query performance. So say we've got loads of orders with like loads of data in them, and then we want something really simple to be able to search across. We can just create a materialized view based on like using chain streams to kind of build that kind of um, 
a, like an overview of a order. So you've got nice searchable like kind of fields for that thing. Uh, and also it's really good for uh, troubleshooting and debugging as well. So maybe you want to see how a document's evolved over time or what is happening to your database or when certain people are adding indexes to certain collections and you want to sack them for decreasing the performance of your database. Um, that's really useful to kind of do. Um, but yeah, one of the things is like, yeah, don't try to like use it for everything like everything, really. Uh, it's not a silver bullet, uh, but it's really useful uh, for certain scenarios. Uh, but yeah, thank you for listening. <laughs>